Welcome back everyone. Thanks a lot for coming back to the channel. Thanks for your subscriptions as always. I uh, appreciate the subscriptions. Appreciate the comments. Getting a lot of good feedback, a lot of good comments on the videos. I hope everyone enjoyed the two-part scrapyard series. Uh, I know I enjoyed uh, putting it in. And uh, if you notice, that's kind of my uh, MO, I guess, for doing the layout. Uh, get an idea for an industry. Sometimes I have a kit that I already purchased. Sometimes I have a siding that I need to fit something in and uh, just run with it. You know, see what happens. And the scrapyard kind of came about, as you can see, it, uh, I changed ideas halfway through. I had uh, thought of where I wanted to put uh, one of the buildings and then that changed and um, yeah, kind of just wing it and see what happens. You can always undo it if you don't like it and I uh, can always change it later. So uh, a little bit shorter today. Uh, I don't have, uh, I've got some new projects planned but uh, nothing uh, after the scrapyard. Um, well, it didn't tap me out. I've, I've still got plenty of things to do. However, I've got uh, very uh, multiple irons in the fire, I guess you could say, but uh, nothing at a point where I'm ready to uh, make a video about it. Um, I think the next few things I want to continue with the scenery in the area that I started, uh, since it's kind of spreading a little bit towards that way, uh, I want to continue on. So. Uh, one of the things we'll flip over and we'll, I'm going to show you is um, a couple of buildings that I built a while back for an older layout that I was trying to repurpose and figure out uh, how can I integrate this in. It doesn't fit the era anymore, but uh, I, I don't want to get rid of it. I don't want to just box it up, put it away, or sell it. I, not that it has any sentimental value, but, you know, figure it's a structure, there's got to be a way to fit it in. So uh, we'll do that. I also wanted to go over um, how to make the um, uh, coal and scrap loads. Um, user Brian102256 uh, uh, commented and asked about uh, seeing how I make these scrap loads. So I thought we'd do that as well. So uh, let's flip over to the workbench and we'll make the scrap loads first. Okay, I've got uh, two different cars here. Um, the, well, a gondola without the trucks and undercarriage. Uh, this is actually a, a kit that I've been working on. It's an old roundhouse kit and um, I've been trying to get uh, simulated dented sides <laughs> and uh, one day back, uh, a while back obviously because it was Easter, my kids got a um, uh, chocolate bunny uh, and I, I want to say it was a quite a high quality uh, like dove chocolate or something along that line. Well the aluminum foil that it came in was was really thick and uh, so I thought you know I'm gonna save this and it's it's not thick enough to model out of anything out of but it might be thick enough to simulate sides of a gondola dented. So what I did is I cut it into strips um, bubbled them up a little bit and then glued them into place and then uh, airbrushed over it um, I'm not totally sold on it, however, um, it really needs uh, some weathering, I think, uh, to really kind of finalize <coughs> excuse me, the, the look and feel. But anyway, that's, that's why this guy has no trucks and is kind of in an unpainted state, but it'll work as a stand-in. And then I've also got this set of Walther's uh, four bay um, hoppers, uh, coal hoppers, that uh, I've repurposed uh, for ballast. And uh, so this is kind of a, a finished product, the the cooking show mentality. Uh, as you can see, that these uh, the the weights for these, well, they were supposed to. Actually, I believe this is how the weights were supposed to go. But I knew that I was going to be putting a load in them, so I didn't care. I just kind of threw the weights in there, and then uh, created the uh, load in this case the uh, gravel load and this is actually the ballast that I use around the layout so um, I eventually would like to I want to patch these uh, spray paint over this over the UP and then uh, rebadge them for uh, Wisconsin Central these aren't the exact versions that they had but Wisconsin Central did have a lot of um, re-stenciled uh, gondolas some from the uh, Missouri uh, Missouri Pacific uh, Clinchfield, Rio Grande, um, and such. So it won't be too far-fetched to say that these are part of it. it. It won't be exact accurate, but close enough. 
So anyway, as you can see, this is just a piece of styrofoam that I've cut to cut to shape. Um, it's easiest if you have a, a one inch piece and you can start with a one inch piece of styrofoam uh, such as this and uh, I happened to trim this one down I believe when I was making these um, but uh, just size it accordingly in this case this is uh, about a half inch thick this is going to probably be a little bit thick for a, a scrap load as you can see it doesn't fit just perfectly but I think that's okay. Now, the uh, you could of course just throw the load in there, but the beauty of this, especially with gondolas, is to make them removable, um, you can then have loads and empties uh, depending on how you stage your trains. Um, and if you go for the, you know, dropping a car off, drop a load in, crew comes to pick it up in the next operating session, uh, or if you rotate your cars, you know, however you do it but having the load removable is kind of nice so looking at it it's just a, a, a scotch short um, but I think for all intents and purposes I'm gonna run with it anyway um, so the first thing this one's not fitting it's gonna fit a little bit too snug in there so we need to trim the sides up just a little bit and I think I'm gonna use an exacto for that or my uh, my razor blade here straight edge just take off a little bit the beauty of this is it doesn't need to be perfect you're going to be um, wearing uh, using the, the rasp again and the uh, knife to to trim them down. So you want it to be snug but not too snug. That That's a little bit too snug I think. I'm going to trim a little bit more off. You want it to sit in there but I don't want it to um, be difficult to get out and then you risk damaging the uh, the load when you take it in and out. I got a good straight edge on that side. Let's see if we can clean this side up here a little bit. Just going to take off just a little. Okay, so that's looking good. So now I think, uh, like I did with the uh, scrap load or scrap uh, piles for the scrap yard, we'll hit this with the rasp and the uh, steak knife. Because <laughs> every modeler uses a steak knife to create a scenery. <laughs> that's what the pros won't tell you, but they do. I'm going to go with this side since I already roughed it up a little bit. Now I, I have seen, uh, Model Railroad did an article uh, for their, when they did their Virginian uh, coal uh, layout, project layout of, what was that, about a year and a half ago, um, where uh, I believe David Pop made scrap, or uh, coal loads using resin. Uh, and I, I'd love to try that. I've never actually tried working with a resin mold. And I, he had a real neat idea too, is he buried, um, in each resin load, he put a washer in uh, and before he poured the resin. So then the washer sat there and you could lift each uh, of the loads out using a magnet, which I thought was a real neat idea. And uh, I know that was a very cost-effective measure as well because resin's not all that expensive. Uh, he cast several of them. Uh, I don't remember their fleet of cars that they had, but they had quite a few cars, and <clears throat> he got inexpensive coal loads that way. Uh, the only downside to that is each of your coal loads kind of looks identical. Now, how many people come to your layout and look at your coal loads and go, hey, these are all identical? Uh, and if you buy commercially available ones, they're going to kind of look the same anyway. So this method, uh, depending on how you form each pile, 
and uh, load, they will have some unique features to each one of them. So you can kind of give, uh, mound it in a certain area, so maybe they load it a little heavier in a, over the trucks, a little thinner over the, the midsection of the car. So much like the, uh, the piles of, of scrap that we made for the scrap yard, uh, same mentality here. But okay, so that's uh, I think that's about the right height that I want to go for here. For this, so I'm gonna fire up the shop vac, clean this up, and we'll come back to the load itself. So again, uh, going with the apple barrel gray again. And apply it right directly to it. I do like to paint this. <coughs> excuse me. I do like to paint the sides of the uh, loads here, uh, just because if it doesn't fill out the car perfectly, you might be able to see the pink siding, and uh, you don't want that. So I'm just cover that up a little bit. Okay. Now that I'm good and dirty, I'm just going to keep going. Got the good, the wood glue out. And uh, one thing I learned from the scrap piles uh, when I was doing those is that uh, a, the paint was good, but the glue uh, helps. Uh, so I'm just going to put down a bead of glue here and then uh, work it into the surface a bit. And the paint starts to mix with the glue and you get kind of a soupy mixture, but the glue definitely helps. Uh, the other thing I'm going to do is put some on the side because this wasn't perfect. Uh, it was a little bit narrower than the car itself. I want the scrap to actually stick to the side a little bit um, to kind of create just a, an overhang, if you will. Uh, and that'll help hide it when you stick a, when you stick the load in. And uh, hopes to hide the, uh, the fact that the load isn't as wide as the car is. Okay. back with the canister of metal shavings here. Okay, uh, no this isn't a finished product, I'm not pulling the, uh, the cooking show thing here. I just switched, uh, I want to put some uh, matte medium down, so I'm going to spray this. And hopefully that helps the, uh, the wood glue wick up a little bit too, um, kind of put that surface tension. and then. Um, just threw it on plastic here to hopefully, once uh, the glue starts to drip down the sides, that it doesn't stick to the uh, the wood. Kind of like same thing I did with the uh, scrap loads for the yard. Now I have a feeling, uh, based on the scrap loads, that this is going to take a few applications of matte medium to really get them to stick. This is really going on pretty well though, so maybe not. So, okay, well uh, that's it for for this phase. Uh, now the waiting process, so we'll uh, time lapse this and when we come back hopefully it'll be dry and I can throw it in the gondola. 
So as you can see, a heavy fog moved in over the layout. No, I'm just kidding. Um, I, uh, one of the things I don't like about model railroading is dust. Well, uh, there's not much you can do about it, but uh, I just throw a simple drop cloth over everything. I know this could lead to damaging trees and buildings and things, but uh, to me it's, it's better than the alternative of having to constantly shop back and I can always repair the trees and, and repair any damage. So uh, you can see I just cover everything up. Usually I only operate on the weekends, so I uh, cover everything up on Friday night or Saturday or Sunday night and open it up then when I want to operate. So, so this is the area that I think I'm going to start working on. This is an old Walther's uh, green, uh, I don't even remember the name of the kit officially anymore. But, uh, you know, it was more for the steam, maybe into the 40s and 50s, and I'm sure that these are still around and in use in, in smaller towns. Um, but right behind it, uh, the plan is to eventually have a, a much larger, more modern um, grain structure. As you can see, I'm, I'm working, well, <laughs> working I, I laid in some stuff. I, I did build these uh, storage bins, the grain drying bins. These are two Walther's towers. Um, those are actually pretty fun to, to build. And then um, so I've got silos and I eventually want to create a, a whole grain uh, tower there. But in the meantime, in the foreground here, I was thinking I would make use of this structure and I think I'm going to give it a, a gray undercoat and then I'm going to try coming over with a real light uh, white and see what happens. I want to make it look worn down and uh, in a state of disuse and then uh, that way I can fill in this area with grass, trees, overgrowth, um, things like that and I'll be able to build off the, the road that I put in here and uh, maybe wear this down quite a bit and uh, so it at one time maybe it was a structure that uh, had rail service but you know for now it's abandoned and, and they haven't taken it out so that's the plan for this area at any rate okay time lapse everything's dry the uh, the glue mixture with mixed with the paint the wood glue and then the matte medium over the top really is holding this in place quite nicely so uh, if you do do these, I highly recommend that uh, that route. Uh, the one downside to this technique is that the glue, sometimes depending on how it grabs the styrofoam, may actually cause this to bow a little bit. Now this one doesn't. This one isn't too bad. I let this one dry completely flat uh, the entire time. However, if you look at one of the rock molds that I made. I, I actually, when these were drying, I set them in the car, and I think combined with the glue drying and the weight, uh, they, it started to sag, and I don't know if it'll show up well or not, but uh, there's a slight bow to this one. However, once it's in the car, it, it really, it just looks like it's part of the, the, the load happens to be low in that spot. So really, it's, it's not the end of the world if it does. So once she's complete, Send it into the car, and Bob's your uncle. You've got yourself a scrap load. As you can see, even though it was slightly smaller than the, the car itself, um, having a little bit of overhang on all the sections, on all sides rather, it uh, fills out quite nicely. And then, uh, I mean, I just use an X-Acto with a screwdriver or whatever, get in there, pop it out, now you've got an empty car. So, you know, for a few bucks, uh, and I really didn't use all that much material on this. Um, now I hope Motrack Models doesn't get upset with me. I, I uh, for lack of a better term, pimped his product last time during the scrapyard show. Well, here I'm. He makes these, and his are are very nice as well. This is just a way to uh, to make your own. If you do buy the scrap material from him, have some left over. There you go. So have at her. Outfit your entire fleet of cars, and. Uh, save yourself some money. So like I said, a little bit short of an episode this week. Uh, after the scrapyard, I um, didn't have as much time unfortunately. I've been shooting the scrapyard over the last few weeks so it uh, it didn't, it wasn't all in a one week period. 
that took a little bit of time between it and waiting for everything to dry and, and all that stuff. So uh, a little bit shorter this week, but I did want to highlight something else. I don't think I've talked about these uh, in past episodes, um, but it, so I thought I'd share a uh, little tools and tips kind of thing. These are from a company called Rightway. Uh, the Rightway Clamping System. Maybe you've seen them um, on YouTube before, um, but uh, basically they're just uh, made out of acrylic, and you can see they've got uh, magnets in here, and they stick together, like magnets do. And then there's also another piece that goes with them, and then you stick it on there like so, uh, Wait, there we go. And then you can put it on a flat surface and you can use these to build uh, the corners, uh, nice solid corners on with your structures. And uh, I've, I've used these now and uh, the, the only downside to these is you need to be careful if you use any of the, um, the like the say for instance the Micromark, um, perf you know, same stuff the 10X7R, any of the plastic welders, um, that will actually melt the acrylic in here. And so you have to be careful when you're applying that. There is a, a nice cutout in the corner here, I don't know if you can see it, but uh, right in this area here, there's a cutout so you can get your brush in there and uh, you won't touch the, the, the acrylic itself. Um, you can see that these, I don't know if you can see it or not, but these have discolored a little bit where I've gotten a little too close with the uh, the glue. But uh, the beauty is, is they're reversible. There's arrows that uh, indicate where they, they attach. Um, and I think they said this is like 14 pounds of force. Um, you can get through some pretty thick material. I've, I've used, uh, I think, like uh, .06. Um, styrene when I've been working and the kit comes with two of them so you can uh, do one wall at a time uh, that's worked out really well for me with the plastic bonder that that dries almost instantly the, the uh, plastic re-solidifies so I'll throw a link in the show notes I got them from Reynolds Imports I believe was in sight uh, if you google right way clamping system uh, these will come up, and I think they were 20 or 24 dollars for the set. A little bit on the expensive side for clamps, but really helpful. Kind of that third and fourth hand when you're building a structure, and if you do a lot of structure building, these will come in handy. So, just a right way clamping system. So that's uh, the video for this week. Um, I hope you enjoyed it. I hope the uh, Brian. I hope you. Uh, kind of got an idea of how I make my loads. Hopefully that helps. And if you guys have any other questions, uh, comments, or anything like that, please feel free to leave them, and I'll try and follow up with a video in the future. It, it's kind of helpful when I'm kind of short on ideas of, of what to shoot, and somebody throws a question out there, I'll follow it up. Um, to Joe, uh, sorry about deleting your comment on one of my previous videos. Uh, that was a complete accident. Um, but I do plan to do a structure rundown at some point. Um, I'll follow up with a video on that. And then uh, I still have a tree making video. We just got a big snowstorm here in Wisconsin. And uh, we're back down and temperatures are back down. And on cue there's the furnace kicking in so you can tell it's a little bit colder. Once it warms up I'll get outside and we'll do a, a video of tree making. So thanks again everyone. Thanks for watching. Thanks for subscribing. And we'll see you next time.